Round one. Hey everyone, this is Koru back with another episode of KGR. Now, first of all, I would like to apologize to everyone out there for the extreme delay of this episode. I know it's been a long time. Well, simply put, life has been kind of busy and hectic. Now, I won't go into details because we got a show to do, so let's get it started. This episode focuses strictly on Xbox Live Arcade games. Just want to get that out of the way so there's no confusion. Now our first game is Ilo Milo, or Ilo Milo, however you want to pronounce it, I'm not too sure. Uh, the game is developed by South End Interactive and Microsoft Game Studios. Ilo Milo, which is what I'm going to call it, is a puzzle game in which you have two characters, Ilo and Milo. The goal of each level is to unite the two who are on separate sides of the level, and in order to unite them, you must work together between the two. There's also a multiplayer mode if you'd like a friend to control one of the characters. Now, I'm only playing single player mode in this review, so let's speak on that. In single player mode, you must alternate between the two characters. Each of the 49 stages is made up of cubes, some of which can be picked up and used to reach certain areas, as well as access hidden items. In order to unlock bonuses, there are little creatures called Safkas hidden in each level. Most levels have about three of them, as well as fragments, which piece together memories via postcard, there's photos and there's vinyl records as well. There are even some levels with appearances from other games such as World of Goo and Super Meat Boy to name a few. Now onto the graphics. They are simply beautiful. This game is a lush world with many vibrant colors, fun twists and turns, and much to discover. The puzzles themselves start off easy enough, but in practically no time at all you are thrust into some really brain twisting puzzles. Now the challenge lies in how good you are at logic puzzles and problem solving. This game stumped me on a few occasions, and frankly, that left me very, very impressed. Now the controls are solid, they're very precise, and they're very simple to pick up. Now I know a lot of people have issues with the Xbox 360 controller, as do I, but it's actually not that bad in this game. I won't get into the story too much as it's very long, and I don't have enough time to explain it here. Bottom line, if you're looking for a creative puzzle game that is sure to challenge even the most seasoned puzzle veterans, get Ilo Milo. Well, at least try the demo first. I loved it, and so will you. Round 2! Round 2 brings us Snake360 by indie developer YYR Games. Now, I had the pleasure of meeting the YYR staff at PAX East this year, and they were kind enough to pass along a review code for me. I appreciate that guys, thank you very much, and I had a blast playing the game with you guys, even though I got my ass kicked. Now, you all know Snake, the classic 1970s arcade game where you control a long thin snake as you roam around the board picking up items or food, with each piece making your snake longer. There, I just described the idea of this game to you. However, this isn't just another Snake game, no 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 no. This game makes Snake more fun than it ever has been before. With over 200 unique stages in the main game mode alone, this game is sure to keep you busy for a good 5 to 10 hours. Oh, did I mention it's only 80 Microsoft points? Bargain. There, I said it. Now you give it a try. Okay, <laughs> now internet ranking is present, along with survival, marathon, kids, and multiplayer modes. There's really something for everyone. In the main game, you must collect 9 targets to clear a stage each course consisting of eight stages. You have multiple difficulties to select from, and the harder the level, the more walls are present, along with an increase on the snake's growth per target eaten. Now the multiplayer mode is what I want to talk about more than anything else, because this game is far more fun playing with friends. In multiplayer, you have the standard battle mode, which is two to four players. Last player that survives wins the round. Very straightforward, very simple. Suffocation mode is my personal favorite, as this mode delays crashes for 3 seconds, so in order to defeat your opponents, you must completely trap them. This mode is a must play if you have 3 friends. I don't, so I played with one friend which was my roommate. Anyway, uh, you can also play co-op mode, in which you and a friend work together to clear the targets. Another thing worth pointing out is the music. The game has a very, very catchy soundtrack to accompany it. One track in particular, Anubis, really caught my attention, as I remember hearing it in the DDR clone In the Groove, which is ironically now owned by Konami. Yes, they will sue indeed. Snake 360 is simplistic, yes, but 
it proves that you don't need a huge budget and extremely detailed story and CG graphics to make a game addicting, fun, and an enjoyable experience. It's cheap, it's fun, try it out, I highly recommend it. People, support your indie developers. Final round! Wrapping up this episode is Swarm by Hothead Games. This game was just released in the marketplace on March 23rd, so it's still pretty brand new. Swarm is dear to my heart personally, as the lovable but completely brainless looking characters brought me so much joy at PAX East this year. I even got a picture with the guy in the suit, and I still laugh my ass off every time I look at the damn thing. Now that thing is called a Swarmite. And in this action platformer, you control 50 of these blue bipedal creatures on a quest to collect DNA in order to save their race from extinction. You control the Swarmites as a unit, but each one has its own intelligence, which causes quite an interesting dynamic in the player-swarm relationship. The objective of each level is to complete it with at least one Swarmite remaining. Scattered through each of the levels are health packs, which restore the number of Swarmites you may have lost along the way. There are also a few checkpoints where you will resume play if all of your Swarmites die. The replay value in this game is great. It comes mainly from the scoring system. Collecting DNA strands can prove to be difficult, as you will need to exercise certain techniques in order to get them. You can huddle the Swarmites together for strength and speed boost, make a tall stack to reach high obstacles, and perform group jumps to reach certain areas. Even killing Swarmites deliberately causes the multiplier to rise, and the higher your score, the better your chances are at reaching the next level. Now let me explain. The game has a scoring system in which you need to achieve a specific score or higher in order to progress. This is somewhat tedious and people might bitch about it, but who cares? I believe it just adds to the challenge and replay value. Also present are death medals and progression medals. Killing the Swarmites in specific ways will unlock these medals, which in turn will get you achievements. I've still got a few to unlock myself. The game, frankly and honestly, kicked my ass before I got the hang of it. I have to stress this, this is not a game for casuals, and it takes practice and dedication to play successfully. Unlike so many difficult games out there over the years, this one is difficult in the best way as it provides a frustrating challenge, but that frustration is based solely on human error, not bad controls or shoddy gameplay. The graphics are nicely done, lots of mood setting areas that really suck you in. The controls are wonderful, simple, and very responsive. The music is pretty good, though it gets better later in the game, provided you make it there. I'm still working my way up. <laughs> my only issue with the game is that it sometimes crashes the system completely at the level select screen. Now I know many are having this issue, and surely it'll be fixed in no time. Bottom line, if you want a fun action platformer, which is clearly developed by a team that has a wonderful, great sense of humor, and provides you with a ball-busting challenge, pick up Swarm. Oh, and if you don't pick it up, I'll keep pressing the Y button. Well, that's it. See you all in a few weeks for episode 4 of KGR. Until next time, game on.